develop more what they were doing. And this was underlying the model of auditing that we are discussing. Two important things, a diversity of methods of data collection and a diversity of actors. In order to do an audit of social responsibility in the context of universities, they should speak with a lot of people inside the universities and listen to diverse bodies of actors, not only to the rector, not only to the vice rectors, but students, professors, researchers, staff in the university should be included if you want to have a vision of what the university is doing in terms of social responsibility. And of course, the idea of an historical vision. How come did the university get involved in social responsibility? What's the story behind it? How did this become an issue? Is there, what, how, how does this translate into practice? I'm not going to go too much into this, but the perspective of social responsibility, and this is why I had a Russian dolls over there, it's because we are assuming here, or inspired by a perspective of Yuri Brofenbrenner in his view of human development. And what he calls is the attention. She is presenting some information you have there, the students, but the others are photographs or pictures or of the final presentation. When you have people from the university coming and listening to what the students have to say in terms of how the university is doing in terms of social responsibility. Well, I, I'm really closing. And I have here some publications. Marcia Coelho did her PhD in connection to this. So she has publications that you can look. I have only three codes to show you a little bit things that I feel are particularly interesting on this project. The University of, of Porto, the training of trainers. But the thing is, what is the university for? So when you discuss the social responsibility issues, of course you are discussing what is the university for. And uh, Zgaga, who is a um, Slovenian uh, researcher um, in education, has discussed what he calls the four archetypes of European higher education. And he discussed this, and I'm using here his model, and I'm illustrating each of these archetypes, uh, which quotes from the London Communique, which was issued during the Bologna process. And this shows you how these archetypes continue to exist in the way we think about higher education today. So it says, well, the very more traditional should not and can't respectfully stated how the university has the responsibility of knowledge development and as such there is no room for the King of Prussia to interfere with what happens at the university in terms of knowledge development.